In this tutorial, we will see end plate operation settings. We use numerous operation to connect members in Idea Statica. To start with, we need to load the end plate operation. To do this, we can either use the operation button here on the ribbon menu, or right click on operations in the list of entities. A new window will open, with a list of all operations implemented into the software. If you look here at each options we have, there appears a representative image that gives us a general idea about the related operation. In this case, we want to generate an end plate operation. So this one suits what we want to do. Then I select it and I have EP1 in my operations list. I have the data and features entry window here at the right with all the fields related to the selected operation. The structure of the features window is mostly similar. What I mean is, you can introduce plate data such as thickness, you can change bolt distances and quality or you can modify welds. The software first asks us which elements we want to connect, because there can be various members in our model. I can do this in two ways, either selecting the related member from the drop-down menu, or selecting the arrow on the right and simply click on the member that I want to join. The second way is more convenient when I have lots of members. Another important field here is connected to, meaning to which member I am going to connect my initial member. You can also change the thickness, the connection type or some dimensions here. Let's move on to the side view to edit bolts better and more understandable. Initially you can select the type and grade of bolts. If I want to modify these values, or I want to use another type of bolt, we can use the plus icon. When you click on this plus icon, you will be able to change the grade and the metric size of bolts. I can specify the location and number of bolts with the top layers and bottom layers variables. To better understand the bolt positioning, let's select the rectangle from the dimensions line and introduce these dimensions to the end plate. Then, when we type 0 to top layers and bottom layers lines in the bolt section, only one bolt appear in the center of the profile. My recommendation is always having these fields, I mean top and bottom layers 0. The center line of the beam corresponds to 0 0 position. Let's write for example, 90 to top layers line. As you see, the position of the bolts has changed and moved 90 millimeters upwards. If I want to move the bolt to the right, I should write a value to the left layers, and let's do it 60. We can see the plate dimensions and the places of the bolts by this dynamic dimensions in graphic window. Let's imagine that I want to add second row of bolts. To do this, I can write for example minus 60 here, and do not forget to enter a space between values. And then I want to add two more bolts with the same distances. We wrote minus 63 times and it is repetitive. Instead of writing many times, I can write minus 60 times 3, so that is more practical. I can also use absolute coordinates from the centerline to generate the same bolt group. If I write 30, 90, minus 30, minus 90 I will get the same. That means if you use semicolons, the software gets them as absolute values with respect to the centerline. Otherwise the spacing will be considered relative according to the last bolt. As an alternative way, you can write 30 60, minus 30 minus 60. The bolts will be lined up in the same way. Let's bring it back to the previous lineup. To create four more bolts at the left side, all I have to do is writing minus 60 after 60 semicolon. Now I have eight bolts in total. Another feature here is, where we are going to have the shear plane. Whether the shear plane in the threaded part of the bolt, OT the unthreaded part. This consideration is relevant from the point of the shear resistance of the bolt. My recommendation is, you should always select shear plane and thread. Because in that way, you will be on the safe side. The last parameter that I can define for bolts is, how the shear force is going to be transferred. The friction field is only available for grade 8.8 .8 and 10.9 bolts. As a result, if I have another grade of bolts and select friction, the software will warn us with an error. In the welds part we have two lines, flanges and webs. If I modify the flange weld value and increase, the welds on flanges will change in the graphic window. When we set it to zero, the software takes a default value. We can also select different materials those are already loaded in the project. Finally, 
we can change the topology of the welds from the icons here. If I want to generate a similar operation I can do it from scratch or I can copy this operation. I can duplicate by clicking on copy at the upper right corner or right clicking EP1 and selecting copy. I can use the new one to connect another member or I could compare different types of design. With this checkbox, I can activate or deactivate the operations that I want to calculate. For example, in operation 2 I can change the bolt distribution and get 5 bolts in a column. So I can make comparisons between the results of 1 and 2, without needing more models. I also want to mention about another practical feature to create connection between members. You can also create operations by using the graphic window. Let's imagine that, I want to join beam 1 to the column. To do this, first deactivate EP2 and change the cross-section of the column as HEB300. Then right-click on beam 1 and select connected to. And finally click on the column. By this feature, you can select numerous connection types here in this window. Let's select an end plate operation and click OK. Then select bolt grade and metric size again and click OK. So I have a new end plate operation. Of course, that is created with the default parameters and I can modify all like I did before. 